Well, thank you very much, Dr. Gerges. Thank you. Um, really appreciate the work that Coptic Solidarity has done to mobilize support on Capitol Hill and elsewhere on behalf of the Coptic Christians, which unfortunately are facing such challenges in Egypt. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be brief. I've, uh, and following two wonderful lawmakers, you know, Albio Sirius is from my state. I'm a Republican. He's a Democrat. He does a tremendous job on the Foreign Affairs Committee. I'm glad you heard from him. And, and Gus Bilirakis, uh, following in the footsteps of his father, uh, who is also a congressman from Florida, uh, you certainly have had two of the best of the best. So thank you for inviting me to be here to say just a few words. I've learned to be briefer than normal. Um, I, I am from New Jersey, and as you probably know, we have a huge problem with Lyme disease in the Northeast, particularly in New Jersey. So I chair the Lyme Disease Caucus, and I was invited uh, last year to give a, a keynote speech at their annual convention, about a 1,000 people, a lot of families, and uh, right here in Washington. So I, I said, how long do I have? They said, you got an hour. I took the full hour. That's a long keynote. I took an hour and five minutes, to be exact. And afterwards, this little girl came up to me and said, Mr., your speech was long and boring. <laughs> Turned around and walked away. <laughs> a few minutes later... Her father came up and said, I saw you talking to my little daughter, Melissa. I want you to know she's at that where she just repeats whatever she hears. <laughs> so, so as my staff will tell you, um, and anyone, I, I'm much more succinct and, <laughs> and shorter ever since then. I um, am delighted to be here. Um, the President Al-Sisi was here just a few weeks ago. I can tell you that my focus in that meeting was a foreign affairs was on behalf of Coptic Christians. Uh, I remember for years <laughs> in trips to Egypt, to Cairo, as well as here in Washington, every time uh, Mubarak came in, uh, my area was to focus on Coptic Christians and, and, and to hopefully, and with President El-Sisi, I raised an issue that he said he would get back on, uh, and that is the whole abduction issue. I've actually chaired three hearings, congressional hearings, on the abduction of Coptic Christian girls, uh, many of them minors, and, and uh, with the focus on um, that is trafficking. I've written four laws to combat human trafficking, and we need to do much more on this issue. And we are planning another hearing again uh, to focus on that issue. He said he would get back. I said, you know, Mr. President, uh, just think, I'm a father of four children, two boys, two girls, the abduction of a daughter and then forced into a marriage and also a capitulation of faith through coercion, uh, I can't think of anything uh, that would so hurt a family and certainly hurt that young girl and that kind of uh, abuse. Uh, so I can assure you we'll keep the focus on that um, uh, going forward because I think that is a horrific um, exploitation of women and of families. I also, you know, we, we've all watched with horror as churches have been uh, destroyed, blown up by, by um, Al-Qaeda-type uh, uh, terrorists. Uh, but you've got to know that the faith and the resiliency and the strength of the Coptic Christians is absolutely inspiring. In my district, there are a number of Coptic Christians living in the Homedale area. Uh, and I can tell you the, the faith... Um, and the overcoming, the persevering spirits are, are awe-inspiring. So a credit to all of you uh, for your faith, but also for your backbones, uh, men and women of true character and strength that inspires all of us to action. Uh, last December, I authored another religious freedom law. Uh, I named it after Frank Wolf, who was the great champion of religious freedom in the U.S. House of Representatives and the entire Congress, for that matter. Uh, it's called the Frank Wolf International Religious Freedom Act of, of, of 2016. And that legislation is multifaceted, but it finally, hopefully, will give voice and a tangible contact with our policy, because it is a whole-of-government approach, to ensure that from the National Security Council and the NSC to every other aspect of our government, religious freedom will be front and center, not as an asterisk on page four, which it was, sadly, in some of the previous administration, uh, but it will be front and center uh, to, to integrate it into our foreign policy. It requires the promulgation of, of religious prisoners uh, so that we know in country X, Y, or Z 
who's being hurt, who's being incarcerated, and then it becomes a serious part of our, our bilateral relationship with that country. Uh, it also will hold to account individuals who have committed crimes based on religious freedom against people. So that if you're a government um, a policeman or you name it in the government uh, that, that tortures or in any way uh, works against religious freedom, uh, you don't get a visa. You will find that your ability to do business with the United States corporations uh, will be severely hampered. It's got to be implemented, uh, but it is the law. We passed it. It's been signed. And my hope is that this new IRFA uh, enlargement, International Religious Freedom Act, will make a major difference. I also had a bill passed just two weeks ago, uh, co-sponsored by Anna Eshoo. Uh, we worked on it since September. Um, my staff and I, we, worked, we actually traveled to Erbil, where Christians, as you all know, have been left behind and left out when it has come to humanitarian aid. And we met with um, the Chaldean Catholic bishop leader there, uh, Wurda, who said, why has the government of the United States bypassed us for three years in county? I've had nine hearings on it. Finally went there myself and went to an IDB camp where there were 6,000 Christians who fled from the Mosul and the Nineveh Plain who were only being helped because of Christian contributions. Nothing from the United States government. Uh, the Poles and the Hungarians kicked in some money, but that's about it. So this legislation will direct money to ensure that the Christians, the, the victims of genocide, uh, are not left behind any longer. That's passed the House. It's now pending in the Senate. And our hope is that the Senate will take it up very, very shortly. Uh, finally, I just want to say that uh, World Magazine did a wonderful uh, cover story about the Christian men who suffered martyrdom and the faith that inspires us as the faith of the first century Christians who suffered martyrdom uh, in persevering for their faith, refusing to capitulate on their faith in Jesus Christ. And, and, and it, it, I have to tell you, martyrdom is, is, is horrible. We know that all but one of the apostles were martyred. Uh, but to see the wives and the families, and I watched a video where they talked about their loved ones who were martyred, I, it was all inspiring faith and, and courage. And again, that all comes back to the good work that you're doing with Coptic Solidarity. And I want to thank you for doing that. Keep us on our toes. Uh, we expect Sam Brownback, the governor of Kansas, very shortly to become the new ambassador at large for religious freedom. And Sam Brownback was a House member, a Senate member, a governor, and a very, very effective and a very faith-filled man. And I believe he'll carry the message of Coptic Christians uh, to Egypt and to and for all beleaguered uh, people of faith uh, because he is the real deal. So I think we have in waiting um, uh, a, a, an outstanding uh, leader and so that, that's I think going to be a you know a major change because personnel is policy. Who you put in those gate positions make all the difference in the world. We also have in Mike Pence, the vice president, a strong, I served with him for a dozen years here, um, one of the strongest believers um, who's ever served in government. And he brings his faith. You know, there was a famous statement uh, where Nikita Khrushchev went into a, into a factory and he asked a man, do you believe in God? And he said, at home, yes, here at work, no. Mike Pence brings his faith into his work in a robust way and it makes all the difference in the world. So I think we have every reason to believe because he is the guy that is the go-to guy in religious freedom in this administration. And of course, the ambassador at large will be that as well. Thank you for your work. Uh, it, it inspires us. It enlightens us as to what to do. And again, to be on the dais with two of the great members of Congress is truly a, a privilege. Thank you.